friends. Can you stop? Can you stop? Can you please just stop? Probably should tell you what I'm asking you to do. Stop making good art, okay? That is my thing for today. And what does that mean? Well, here's the thing. I've noticed over time and time again, when I talk to students and to myself, um, I learned that they're afraid to mess up their paintings. They're afraid to waste supplies. They're afraid to make those giant leaps that will make their art more creative. And the reason is because they're afraid to fail. They want their results to be good every time. And when they're not, they get anxious and frustrated. It's called perfectionism. I have a course on that on Skillshare. Check it out, link below. But anyway, and so I have a little switch for you guys, a little mental shift, if you will. This mental health therapist is suggesting that you try. Have you ever thought of possibly just making bad art? Now, before you go to the next video, just give me a second to explain. If we go into a situation expecting that things may not turn out well, then what we create is not gonna be as stressed out. We are not gonna feel like we need to make everything perfect because we know that sometimes we create something that just kinda goes in the trash can. Now, I'm not saying that you need to think that you're gonna create something ugly or something bad, but letting go of the expectation that things have to be perfect every time will help you let go of that end result focus the anxiety provoking need to love everything that you make, which is impossible. Guys, I create a lot of trash art, meaning there are pieces that I just don't wanna keep around and I just don't wanna show you. But if I were to focus on that and say, well, that's just bad, so I'm a bad artist, it makes me feel bad. So if I'm able to let go of the expectation of perfect art and just focus on what I'm doing now, then every little brush stroke that I put down might be a little bit more enjoyable. Every mark that I make on my paper might bring me a little bit more happiness and contentment because the process is the most important part. If you cannot enjoy the process, then the end result, it really doesn't matter. So take a little bit of a moment to think and process this. Is this something that you might be able to fit into your life? And just enjoying the color mixing, enjoying the shapes and the textures that you put down on your paper. I promise it's gonna make a big difference in how your art turns out because you're not gonna be tense. You're not gonna be sitting there like, oh, this has to be perfect. We have a huge problem with that. So take a deep breath with me. So the therapist in me tells you to relax and enjoy your process and the artist in me tells you to play with your supplies and see where it takes you. So let's get to our project. I know I'm usually excited about projects, but today I'm particularly excited because we are painting Icelandic poppies and I'm using my Light Wish palette here, my Christy Rice brushes, my meat and water pot, and we're just gonna have a lot of fun. The book here is my flower color guide. All these things will be linked in the description if you're interested in them. And of course my Academy paper. So I'm going to start by doing some nice yellow sunbursts, I like to call them, for the center of these flowers. And I like to keep things pretty loose, uh, not worrying too much. It can be challenging to paint loose, especially when you're really wanting to, but it's sort of a mindset. It's how you hold your brush loosely versus intensely grabbing your brush and holding it tight uh, versus holding your brush at the tip versus at the middle or the end of the brush and just experimenting with doing things differently and, and your results and how they turn out. So I like to add in my centers first, not always, but it is a preference. And it might seem a little complicated to do that because it's like, well, you've got your wet center and then how do you add in your petals? But you just do it. You maybe leave a little bit of extra white space around that wet center or you can dry it first. I just find that I feel like the centers sing uh, a little bit more if I put more concentration and put them in first. So that's just my the, the way I like to do it, but you paint it however you'd like when you're painting things. Now I'm taking my large three quarter inch dagger brush from Christy Rice and we're just going to make some really pretty creamy petals. We're going pretty light with this nice peachy color. I like to work from the outside in 
grabbing some water so that I can lighten up the value of those brush strokes. And remember, we are going to add in details. And so this part, don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. You can pop in some color on top of it, wet on wet, if you'd like, and just really work quickly. And you know, I do that simply so that I'm not overthinking what I'm doing. So now I'm grabbing a medium pink color here and adding some water. And I like to dab my brush in the paper towel. It helps me control how much water is on my brush. So I do also love to use a large brush versus a small one for loose flowers because when we're using a large brush, we tend to want to draw in the shape of the flower petals, the shape of everything versus making these quick brush strokes and things tend to be a lot more just tense, uh, less relaxed. And so the larger the brush, I feel the larger those petals are gonna be, the looser they're gonna be as well. So I've got a side facing here, which means you're gonna see more of the petals on the one side and on this other side here, you just see a little bit of it. It's tilted and we'll just add those in. They're kind of tucked behind the other flowers and that's okay. So guys, as we're painting, remembering and reminding yourself, we're not creating good art today. We are creating art that is pleasurable, that is fun, that is going to bring us uh, a sense of joy, a sense of peace. Now I'm gonna do the buds and I love poppy buds. They're these cute roundish oval shape little objects and then I leave some white space in the middle because we'll come back in and we'll add some pink because with these buds, as they start to open, you're able to see part of those petals as well as the surrounding green part. And when you are adding in your stems, you want to try to curve them around, especially if you can see the part where it's connected to the flower. And that's one really beautiful, unique piece about these florals. So these buds also tend to be facing down before they're open. And so that's what I'm trying to emulate over here. I'm thinking I want to add another bud in. And I also wanted to mention for a second the reference book that I mentioned, the color flower guide, flower color guide, flower color guide. There you go. As I'm adding in this other curvy stem to complete this composition before we start adding in the buds and the details, I am not following this to a T, but I am using, I mean, you can see that there, right? I'm using it for composition and helping me to know where to place things, but I'm also adding in my own extra details or changing the way a few things are. So I do love a good reference book. I use reference photo all the time, people. My paintings just come out better. It's just a fact of life. So don't feel ashamed if you are using one or think that you should be painting out of your brain. Most of us are using a reference and that's okay. So I'm just darkening up my centers before we start adding in our details. And remember, guys, if you are liking this video, please like it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you get updated whenever I post anything. I'm also on Patreon, bonus content is on there. You guys can get exclusive tutorials. I'm gonna darken up these centers with a little bit of that beautiful turquoise blue color. And I even have original paintings on there on Patreon. So it's a fun little tier that you can sign up for. Reminding you that I still have spots left for my Italian retreat coming up in October. So those are all linked in the description. And then of course my Skillshare classes, the link is still there if you wanna check out 30 days free. I will be coming out with a beginner's course mid-March if you're watching this video after then it hopefully is linked below, but you can access that by using the links from Skillshare that are there currently. So right now I am just taking a light pink color and I'm adding in shadows and texture. Uh, these poppies have lots of lines and lots of petals tucked inside each other and around each other. And so we are just trying to create some beautiful contrast and like I said, shadows to create some really beautiful looks here. So instead of just having that one one wash of color, which you can leave it like that, but I do like to add details at times to make them really fancy. So I've got a more saturated paint, less water, more paint on my brush, and that's allowing me to really fancy up these centers. So I'm just kind of working quickly. I am not overthinking symmetry. I'm changing up the colors, the pinks, the reds, I even have some fluorescence on my palette that I will be using later. 
and just trying to um, create some interest in these little ladies over here. So let's see, we're going to grab a little bit of that peachy color. I really love it. It's the base color for one of those florals. Adding that in as well. And sometimes it can be really hard, this whole process we've been talking about of not overthinking and forcing yourself to create something beautiful every time. But perfectionism creeps in to most of our lives and it really sucks the joy out of the process and the moment by moment enjoyment of being able to paint just to relax, just to loosen, loosen up that anxiety, maybe to elevate your mood if you're feeling down and just to give you a sense of peace um, that everything's gonna be okay, a little break from all the rumination that our brain tends to do. So I'm adding in some of that fluorescent here and you can blend it with a clean damp brush or you can leave, like I'm blending here, or you can leave some of those bold strokes, it's really up to you and the look that you're going for when you're painting these florals. So as we're painting this and I'm adding in those really intense marks, guys, I also have one-on-one -on -one sessions and that's linked below. If you wanted to take your watercolor journey one step further, loose florals, loose landscapes, or just learn how to be more creative, I do have one-on-one -on -one, uh, video lessons. Um, it's more like video calls and where we can actually personalize a lesson or a few for you and just work through projects together in, in person on a video chat platform, <laughs> if that makes sense. So for here, this piece is almost done, but I just like to go through it and you know add a few more details, darken up that center. So it looks like there's some depth there, there's some volume as well. And if you feel tempted to overwork a painting, walk away, come back and, and think, do I really need to add more? And sometimes less is more, and sometimes you wanna do more as well, and that's okay. And I encourage you just to keep practicing and just enjoying. I'm just gonna add a little bit of light splatter to create a nice magical feel for this painting, guys. We are done, and I hope you enjoyed the process. Mm -hmm.